Good morning, everyone. Uh, pleasure having you here. Pleasure being on stage again. Marcel, why is cybersecurity for industrial control systems so important? Cybersecurity is always very important. But the thing is, for industrial control systems, is that they have not the experience that classical IT systems normally have to deal with cybersecurity threats. But on the other hand, they have really distinct threats that are, uh, are common in cyber uh, in industrial control system. So for, for example, they have to deal with a lot of legacy systems, old control systems that they just cannot uh, exchange for new systems or cannot easily patch. But on the other hand, systems that were never intended to be connected to the outside are more and more connected to the internet or to, to the cloud. And they have to deal with the threats that are coming with that. And that in a threat environment that is continuously evolving on the IT and on the OT side. Speaking of the threat environment, I mean, risk is a very abstract thing, right? So speaking of the threat environment, have we seen something in the wild? Yeah, of course. So one thing is that uh, the OT environments were influenced by attacks that were classical for the IT environment. A classical example was the NotPetya malicious software that attacked IT environments but spread it into plants and actually disrupted uh, the uh, operation inside of the plant and uh, lead to huge losses and damage. But on the other hand, we are now in a reality where we have laser-focused malicious software targeted on PLCs and control systems like Triton or Stuxnet, and we have to deal with those threats as well. Okay, that, that's a little bit more concrete, but maybe let's, let's take this to another level. Um, we've prepared two, two customer use cases that we would like to basically discuss in, let's say, with you. Um, so the first one, Marcel, w w what happened here? So this is a really interesting use case because we here don't have like an anonymous hacker who actually did something to a plant, but we had a partner of an oil and gas company who actually told the oil and gas company that they accessed the PLCs, the controllers, like really inside of their plants, and they looked at it and said, wait, something is going on here. Are you actually are dealing with us in an honest way? But the takeaway of it was that they were never authorized to actually access those critical systems and the owner of the system never knew that this actually was happening. All right, so we have an unauthorized access, right? Okay. Correct. So what did the customer do with it? I mean, that information is valuable. For, of course. So on the high level, they directly uh, started an, an initiative like uh, spreading VR IT and OT conjunctionally to work on that uh, threat. They uh, changed all the default credentials on all those uh, PLC so that it's never happening again. They uh, implemented security monitoring so they actually can track and know what's actually happening inside of the plans. And they updated the firewall infrastructure. All right. And what, what was the... Vet, what, what what was the immediate value to, to the customer by installing that monitoring, right? So after the monitoring, the customer immediately had complete knowledge which kind of assets they actually have. And if any other threats or unauthorized access would happen, they now would have in real time a feedback what is actually going on in the system. OK, so it, it works like this. Let's say the customer identified, was called up and said, hey, I have remote access to your PLCs. I can see what's happening. And then we help them to install a monitoring solution that is capable of near real time identifying, OK, what is going on? What is the communication that is happening? OK, that's pretty cool. So the second example. So um, sorry. What happened, what happened there? So the thing here was that they realized it's a food and beverage company that actually had bottles filled with a mixture, and they realized that the mixture was off. But they actually had no idea was the threat coming from internal or external, as they had no visibility and no knowledge which parts in the network actually interacted with each other. So they actually had no idea what this actually was happening there, and they had to implement something to actually um, uh, mitigate the threat. And, and what did they implement? So what they did, they began with an OT security assessment to realize what they actually have inside of their plants, as they had no idea beforehand. Then they actually stuffed a sock with IT and OT people to bring the OT understanding to the IT people. And then they contacted different ICS vendors, including us, to actually helping them to finding a solution so this is never happening again. Hold on. Are you, are you say, so usually, let me try to digest it, because usually, what I've experienced in the past is that 
IT and operation don't talk to each other. And you're saying now, one way to resolve it is actually to bring these two together, right? Correct, because a lot of times actually threats that are uh, having effect and damaging the OT environments, they're oftentimes starting in the classical IT environments via phishing or malicious websites and then spreading through uh, gateways that no one knows inside in the plant and actually uh, causing the havoc. All right, and for, for this food and beverage customer, what was, the, what was the value provided with this? So here, the customer actually, after uh, deploying a monitoring solution, they directly got real-time insights into their plan. They again knew what do we have, how are those assets vulnerable, but on the other side, they also got real-time feedback. Do we have any malicious software going on, like classical WannaCry, which could maybe not target it on OT, but still could have an effect on them. Or do we have any indication what, because you were saying they have a, a, a speedy incident handling. Do we have any indication of how much time they saved or what, what, what did so, they gain out of it? So, so the thing is, if you're looking at it, if you have no idea what's going on and no one actually can get a handle on what is happening in the plant, we are talking uh, months, sometimes even man years of uh, manual work that people have to do to investigate incidents. But now you have real-time feedback and we're talking about days, maybe weeks, but so the incident approach and the incident time really was uh, dramatically reduced and they can react in a much more agile manner. All right, that, that sounds very cool. So let me summarize that, that use case. So we had a food and bev company that did face the challenge that someone potentially was able to change the recipe. That sounds very scary to me. And then they brought together IT and OT that were capable of then starting to monitor and see things that were changes. Correct. Correct. Cool. Okay. So, last question to you. So, um, if talking to the audience, what would be the major three takeaways that we can give to the audience? Um, how do the, how should how shall they start? So the most common dom dominator, and I think the first and most important thing is uh, we need visibility inside of the OT networks. Because when we don't know what we are protecting, it's hard to protect the things that we want to protect. So visibility is one key factor to implement in a solution like that. And we can help there because there are different and uh, distinct challenging to do implement something like that for an operational environment, operational industrial environment. Um, the second thing is, as we saw in s uh, some of the use cases, is IT and OT has to work together. You can't do that alone because sometimes the threat is coming from IT, sometimes the threat coming from OT, so you have to find a joint solution. And if they are working jointly together, the efforts are much more effective and can be, um, uh, lead to a much better incident handling process. And in the final step is, if we're actually talking about incident handling processes, if IT and OT are working together to solve those problems, who is actually responsible? IT and OT have to make clear who is actually responsible to lead and drive those efforts and so that uh, every mitigation step is not hindered by politics and we can uh, concentrate on what we are doing and this, that is protecting our plans and our processes. So you're saying in a nutshell, visibility, collaboration and clear responsibilities. These are the things that people, you guys should take away in order to Start with industrial cybersecurity and uh, with us. So if you are interested, we are not far away. We are just around the corner, just a few meters ahead on booth 116. I am. We are very happy to see you there after after our talk here and have further discussions with you. Siemens, ingenuity for life.